What's up guys? This is going to be a video about overvolting your GPU. Now I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about overclocking your GPU, but they don't go into much detail on overvolting, and if they even mention it at all, it's usually just in passing, saying something like adding voltage can help with stability and it can help with pushing your core clock even further. And these things are true, but it doesn't give you much detail on it. And I know from firsthand experience that when you're new to overclocking, or even if you're not new to it, but you've never overvolted, this top voltage slider can be a little intimidating because the last thing you want to do is blow up your new graphics card with too much voltage. So hopefully this little tutorial can give you guys some insight into it, into the dangers, into what actually is happening when you adjust the slider as well as what a millivolt is. And at the end we will overvolt my card so you can see how I go about doing it and how easy and relatively safe it really is. So let's get into it. Now regarding blowing up your graphics card, there's not an unlimited amount of voltage you're allowed to add. MSI Afterburner, I'm sure they talk with NVIDIA and the manufacturers, comes up with the amount of voltage that is considered safe. So it's not like I can add 5,000 millivolts or something and you know I don't know what I'm doing and it just blows up. No, even if I max out the slider, I can only add plus 112 millivolts. Now in a second we're going to talk about what a millivolt is because I know that is one of the hardest parts about overvolting, at least it was for me when I first got into it, because you don't know how much MV, if, if you even know what that stands for, you don't know how much to add. You don't know what plus 20 means, what plus 50 means. So we're going to get into that. But one more thing to mention other than the fact that there's a limited, relatively safe amount of voltage that you're allowed to add is something called degradation. Electricity in general, even if you don't add voltage and you don't add any wattage, which is what power limit is, watts, it degrades your VRMs and other electrical components over time. Now what that means is if you have a card, even if you run it at stock, you know, it might come in 10, it might come in 15, it could come in even longer than that. But eventually it's going to stop working because the electrical components are going to degrade down to the point where they can no longer pass electricity and function properly. Now one of the things that can happen by overvolting and overclocking your card is that more electricity and more voltage is passing through those VRMs which over time can degrade them and make it so your card doesn't last as long. So if you're planning on keeping your card for, you know, 10, 15 or 7 or 8 years, overvolting might not be uh, your number one option. But for me at least, I upgrade my card relatively relatively quickly. I would say every 2, 3 years I get a new graphics card. So for me, I'm not worried about degradation because even adding the max voltage, the VRM should hold up until my next upgrade. Now one last thing to consider is cooling. Adding voltage also adds heat, and a lot of it. So if you're using the stock NVIDIA cooler, the stock AMD cooler, overvolting might not be an option for you because it's going to bring a lot of heat and you don't have the cooling capacity to handle it. Now I have a water block on my graphics card and water cooling is always a great option for overclocking because it pretty much takes heat out of the equation and just lets you worry about other things. But you don't necessarily need a water cooling system or a water loop in order to overvolt your card thanks to all the aftermarket air coolers that are available from EVGA, from Zotac, from Asus, from Gigabyte, and all the other board partners that make really good air coolers that are capable of cooling off the added voltage. So you definitely need to consider what kind of cooler do I have on my graphics card before you think about adding voltage. Now what is a millivolt? This was the most confusing part for me when I first started because number one, I still had that fear in the back of my mind that I didn't want to blow up my card, and number two, I didn't know how much to add. 
Now I had already overclocked my processor and my CPU and I assume that the vast majority of the people watching this video that are interested in overvolting their graphics card have already tried their hand in overclocking their processor. And maybe, you know, they started out at 1.25 or whatever and then they read on a forum that 1.3 or a little over that is the max you really want to run it 24-7. So you have an idea about how much to add when it comes to overvolting your processor. And it's kind of similar with overvolting your graphics card, but it's not like it is when you're working in your BIOS and you just type in a voltage, 1.25 for instance. Here you have to use a slider and you have to know what a millivolt is. One millivolt is one thousandths of a volt. So we're going to go back to fifth grade math real quick and talk about places. This is the tenths place. The two is the tenths place. The zero is the, oops, sorry, the hundredths place. And that last zero, this highlighted one, is the thousandths place. So one millivolt is one thousandths of a volt. So by adding plus one MV, it's going to bring my voltage. This is assuming that your starting voltage is 1.2, of course. It's going to bring you up to 1.201 volts. If I add 10 millivolts, it's going to bring it over one place and bring me up to 1.21 volts. If I add 50 millivolts, or let's say, let's say you add 55 millivolts, it's going to bring me up to 1.255 volts. And if you add 100 millivolts, sorry about that, I'm clumsy with these sliders, it's going to bring you up to 1.3 volts. So now you know what a millivolt is and what is actually happening with your voltage. And a good way to monitor this, you can monitor it right out of your MSI afterburner or you can monitor it out of something like GPU-Z, which is what I prefer to use while overvolting my graphics card. But you can use either. You can use the little graphs over here or GPU-Z. So now you know what a millivolt is. You know basically what's happening when you adjust this slider. Let's overvolt my card so you can see what it looks like in action when you're going to do it for yourself. All right, let's get there. All right, guys, so let's overvolt my card and uh, so you guys can see how it's done. The tools that I'm going to use are MSI Afterburner, Valley Benchmark, and GPU Z. Like I said earlier, you don't necessarily need GPU Z because you can read all the things off of MSI Afterburner. There's graphs over here. And you can actually disable the graphs you don't want, so you don't have to scroll through to find the graph you want. You can disable all the ones you don't want, so you only have a couple up here, which makes it easier to read. But I prefer to use GPU-Z for my readings, and I use MSI Afterburner to adjust my voltage and adjust my core clock. Now I'm going to start at an overclock that I know is stable without adding voltage, which for me, I'll do plus 200 on the core and plus 110 on my power limit. And uh, let's run it and let's look at our readings. The readings we're really going to be paying attention to are VDDC, which is voltage, power consumption, core clock speed, and temperature. So let's run the benchmark. Alright, so before I ran it, my voltage was at 1.02 or something like that, which is the voltage when the card is not in use. Right now it's under load, almost under full load, so the voltage is going to ramp up. Right now it's at 1.162 volts without me touching anything. And that's going to be the max voltage it will give me without me adding voltage. And that's really not a lot, that's barely anything. So I have a lot of room when it comes to adding voltage. Now if you look up to power consumption, I'm already at 100%. So just by looking at this right now, I can already tell that before I reach that plus 112, the max voltage they allow, I'm probably gonna run into power limit, power, yeah, power limits 
in which adding more voltage isn't going to help much because the card what it really wants is more wattage and in order to get that more wattage I would have to flash a custom BIOS on the card which is not something we're going to go into right now because we're just dealing with over volting and that's a little bit more advanced but maybe we'll do something with that in the future so right now the card's at plus 200 plus 110 let's look at our settings we're at 1389 megahertz we're at 52 degrees we're at 1.162 volts and we're at 90 it's bouncing around between 195 tdp now i probably should have turned up my fans they're on silent mode right now so my temperature is a little bit higher than a lot higher than it normally would be but it really doesn't matter because that's still a really acceptable temperature regardless so I guess let's add some voltage and see what happens right now we're at 1389 and 1.62 let's add 10 millivolts it bumps us up to 1.18 and look what happened we went up almost 15 megahertz on our core clock speed without even touching the core clock slider now you might be asking, how does that happen? You didn't even adjust the core clock speed and the card's going faster. I'm not positive about this, but I'm pretty sure what's happening is a uh, GPU boost, which is NVIDIA software that basically automatically overclocks your card and pushes it further. That software is recognizing that now there's more available voltage and it's pushing the card a little bit further. So if you leave GPU enabled like I do when I'm overclocking, you're going to find that you're going to get a lot more performance with less uh, core clock added. When you're not dealing with voltage, it's pretty much one for one. If you add 25 megahertz, your core clock speed will go up 25 megahertz. But once you start adding voltage, sometimes it'll double. You'll add 25 megahertz and more voltage, and it'll actually make your card go 50 megahertz faster. So these are real crucial to pay attention to is uh, your core clock, your voltage, and obviously the other two we discussed, your temperature and your power limit. So let's see what happens. Let's bump our core clock speed up to 210 and let's put our voltage up to plus 20. All right, now we're still at 1.18 and 1412. You're gonna see that these the software that reads the voltage, it's not perfect. Like right there, you saw when I added 10 before, it only brought it it brought it up a lot it brought it up from 1.62 to 1.18 and now I just added another 10 and it still says 1.18 so this isn't perfect in order to get a perfect voltage reading you're gonna need like some clamps to go on there and a VOM meter and all that jazz it anyone who's not an electrician or in a trade like that doesn't have those tools but it's not really something to worry about so let's add another let's go up to 220 and let's go up to plus 30 millivolts and look at that we are at 1434 megahertz and now we went up to 1.19 volts which is still a relatively low voltage I would feel comfortable running this voltage 24 7 playing games and not have any worry about the card like I said earlier, even if it was maxed out, it's not something to worry about, but 1.19 is a really low voltage, and we're already up almost 40 megahertz higher than we were before we added voltage. Now one thing to keep in mind is if you look at the power consumption, now we're up to 105.5 at times, probably even higher than that at times. So like I said earlier, you can tell just by looking that most likely power consumption is going to be the limiting factor before voltage is. Let's add another 10 megavolts and another 10 megahertz plus 230 and now we're at 1445 megahertz and this is basically the process you're going to go through. You're going to be adding voltage and adding 
clock core clock adding voltage adding core clock and you know it might crash in between because you didn't add enough voltage or you added too much core clock and it's just a balancing act to find how much voltage is required and this is actually where something called ASIC quality comes into play basically what ASIC quality means is the amount of voltage it needs to run a certain speed I have a pretty good ASIC quality, I think it's 74%, which is pretty good, so I don't need a ton of voltage to run a good speed. Now right there, my power consumption got all the way up to 110%, so that means I'm already pushing the limits at times of my power consumption. So if it were me, I might say, okay, I'm at 1445 megahertz, let's get it up to an even 1450 and uh, call it a day until at a future date maybe I want to put a custom BIOS on if I get real brave so oh man look we're up at 1465 megahertz and jump in between 1.218 volts and uh, 1.19 and if you look at my power consumption yeah it's getting up above 110 percent a lot of the time so this is pretty much where I would stop now like I said, I have been able to get this core clock all the way up to 1490, but what happens is I'm running into power limits so often that it'll jump down between 1460 and 1490 and it just won't be stable. So for me, this is probably where I'll leave it. See, I would just jump down to 1459 real quick. That's not because it needs more voltage, it's because it's running into power limit. So without a custom BIOS, this is probably the max stable that I can run. I mean, you could, I could push it further. It's just not going to run at that speed all the time because at certain times it's going to need more power. And I'm kicking a dead horse. I know I've been talking about this for way too long, but it's important to know your limiting factors, which in this case, my limiting factor is wattage and not voltage. So I guess that's about it for this part. You guys saw the process. It's going to be different for every card. Some cards you might need to add more voltage to get less. Some cards are really good overclockers like the GTX 980 can overclock real well, especially the aftermarket board partners like EVGA. They can get up to 1600 megahertz. So it's really important to do some research on your card so you have an expectation and something to shoot for when you're doing this process. So that's it for this part of the video. I'm going to close all this stuff and I'll be back to say thanks for watching pretty much. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was a future video I'm going to be putting out, which is going to be detailing and documenting my upgrade from soft tubing and my custom loop to rigid tubing, this uh, PETG. This will be my first rigid tubing loop I've ever done and I thought I would document it for you guys so you could all point and laugh at my <laughs> inevitable mistakes and also in my successes. And I'm going to be doing a pretty big upgrade, new radiator, new uh, pump r tubular reservoir combo as well as the rigid tubing. So it's going to be a completely new look when I'm done with it and I'm hoping you guys would enjoy if I brought you along for the ride. So look out for that video. The first one should be coming out next week uh, just detailing some of the parts I'll be using. I won't actually be tearing it all apart for a little bit longer. But again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this and feel a little bit more comfortable over volting your card because really the risks are real small where the benefits can be real big depending on your card. Alright guys, peace!